good afternoon class 12 students uh, today uh, again we continue with chapter 14 of biotechnology and its application and now we are coming to a very interesting area of the applications of biotechnology we have come really to a very very interesting area and here in the last video if you remember we studied about the immobilization of enzymes if you remember and we also studied about the uh, properties of enzymes whose cell immobilization method we studied and the immobilization of enzymes we saw was better than the free enzyme uh, enzymes that were available in the immobilization uh, technical method then we saw stem cell technology we studied about application of biotechnology in agriculture and why genetic modification is carried on in plants and uh, the benefits it causes to human beings so all this we saw in the last video today we will study about biotechnology in agriculture development and major techniques of crop in improvement some of these techniques are listed here uh, so some of these techniques which are for uh, crop development for agricultural uh, improvement are cell and tissue culture we studied a bit about this in class 11th also children uh, then somatic hybrids then we also study about hybridization through embryo rescue and we also study some techniques regarding anther and pollen culture we also study about techniques of plant transformation and regeneration then uh, children we come to uh, the first one uh, that we take from here cell and tissue culture the cell in cell and tissue culture we see that the plant tissue culture refers to the vitro cultivation what is vitro cultivation not cultivating uh, in the medium of soil but in the vitro that means outside the uh, culturing of plant tissues outside soil Uh, cultivation of plant parts in aseptic conditions in such laboratory conditions where uh, the, it it is totally germ free so those are aseptic conditions and it's controlled aseptic environment there in the labs and a suitable uh, nutrient material are uh, two main requirements for tissue culture first we get an environment where which is germ free and the other thing is that we also get nutrient medium environment these are the two requirements for tissue culture then we see that the essential nutrients required include uh, inorganic salts car carbon and energy sources vitamins and group growth regulators all these are uh, there to give the essential nutrients required for the development of tissues and cells now recently children tissue culture has helped to regenerate whole plants from just cells or from protoplasts that means parts of cells like protoplasts and the tissue of large number of plant species have been taken a large number of spines plant species were taken and the tissues have been cultured right from the cell stage the plants regenerated from callus uh, th which is a suspension culture plants they were regenerated from suspension culture or from a single cell and showing increase in genetic variation there were different genetic variations that were developed uh, by regenerating plants from cells then we see that tissue culture with uh, profit 
has been applied to rice and tissue culture has been uh, applied to sugarcane to coffee plants to potato plants etc we see that the tissue culture provides a high quality disease free adequate and timely uh, quantities of planting materials of root and tuber crops like potato uh, like turnip and we see uh, other things like sweet potato all these have been developed by the tissue culture uh, uh, technique and this uh, provides us high quality disease disease resistant and uh, timely quantities because we suddenly need in large quantities uh, the provision of these tissues so that the farmers can grow them uh, in abundance in their fields then we see that some uses of tissue culture are here uh, which we were studying about uh, one is called micro propagation technique of tissue culture another is uh, soma clonal variation uh, technique uh, of tissue culture another is isolation of desirable mutants technique that uh, we uh, put in tissue culture development uh, now we will uh, take these three one by one children in micro uh, propagation if you see here the micro propagation technique of propagation which involves the cell first it is taken at the cell stage a very minute cell stage it is taken and uh, we see it involves cell tissue organ culture uh, in micro propagation that's why it's called micro because it is at the cell stage or at a minute uh, tissue stage and this produces uh, plants which are genetically identical we see that the plants that are produced they are genetically identical plants uh, like we had the plant here the similar kind of variety of plant is uh, developed they, that are genetically identical plants and it's possible to raise large uh, progeny or large number of uh, clones from a single cell in a very short time because so many farmers they require it uh, and it's possible uh, by taking cells from the apical dome of the plant the cells are taken right from the top from the apical dome of the cells why because these are uh, disease resistant areas the apical parts of the plants or the apical dome of plants uh, these are possible to get plants which are devoid of viruses or devoid of infections then we see that automatic plants developed from tissue culture at a mass scale uh, they could be uh, developed and also when so many plants were cloned and developed then it reduced the cost of micro propagation so we see that this is also uh, one of the things uh, which benefits us that uh, in less amount of money we can produce more amount of these tissues the next uh, uh, tissue culture technique that we will study about is known as soma clonal variation in soma clonal variation when plants are regenerated through tissue we see here this is soma clonal variation when the plants they are developed from tissues very fine tissues are taken and the plants are developed this is of soma clonal variation and we see that uh, the plants they are developed to a full strength they, they were first at the level of tissues they they were uh, small tissues of these plants that were first taken and these variants uh, are uh, obtained are of potential value in crop improvement 
without resorting to mutagenesis or hybridization now here we are not using hybridization techniques but here we are using as our tissue culture techniques developing plants right from a single cell or from a minute tissue and the variants may be regenerated into plants and uh, these are uh, then screen for variety of the des desirable plant traits we see like plant traits for ornamental plants for beautiful flowers then these can be for plants like uh, eucalyptus and other kind of plants uh, that later on can be planted in the fields and these become large trees so we see that uh, soma clonal technique is utilized for development of plants for development of different kind of vegetables the and we see that uh, in these techniques all cell level at cell level only uh, these are the traits like resistance to specific herbicides there are plants that have been developed that are resistant to specific herbicides to fungal toxins uh, they can resist to uh, those toxins that uh, are of fungal nature then pollutants to extremes of temperature and high high salt concentration all these uh, can be developed in uh, the tissue culture plants then we see see soma clonal variability appears both in monocots that means like triticum like zea maize etc in these uh, also monocot plants the soma clonal va variability can appear and it can also be developed in dicots in brassica compestris which is sarsum in solanum nigrum uh, we see in uh, uh, potatoes and uh, so many other uh, variety of vegetables also soma clonal variation appears and soma clonal variations was first isolated uh, for following uh, characters for resistance to eye spot diseases uh, this was caused by a helminth uh, called helminthosporium sacchari and so this uh, disease was caused by a certain helminth or a, a worm uh, which pertains to uh, helminthes um, family and we see that uh, resistance to such diseases was developed then resistance to fiji disease now this fiji disease uh, was due to a virus and so soma clonal uh, technology was used to uh, produce such uh, tissue culture plants which were resistant to viruses then we see uh, that Uh, there were plants that were developed which were resistant to downy mildew now what is downy mildew a uh, downy mildew is also a kind of a uh, fungus uh, which is sclerospora sacchari so there were plants that were resistant to downy mildew or to sclerospora sacchari so uh, we developed uh, such plants through tissue culture then we see that uh, research uh, on wheat was done variations is shown by both morphological and biochemical traits uh, of wheats uh, then we uh, were able to do this by soma uh, clonal techniques then uh, we see here that there were many other techniques that were used uh, techniques uh, we used like uh, ornamental plants were also developed and soma clones isolated for potato tissues were developed uh, which is disease resistant variety then uh, we also saw that uh, we developed a, a technique 
for ornamental plants which also develop through soma clonal technique so all these plants they were developed then we see isolation of desirable mutants was developed and uh, in this technique uh, successful and effective isolation of mutants has been achieved as uh, certain mutants uh, are isolated and these are achieved by cell culture that are resistant to diseases to herbicides they are resistant to salt salt or to cold uh, weather so they are tolerant to cold or they are salt tolerant then we see then cells that are resistant uh, to lethal concentration of diseases uh, toxins are allowed to regenerate into whole plants then we, uh, we see uh, that the toxin uh, the toxins they were allowed to grow in the vicinity of these cells and because these cells were resistant to these toxins later on these plant cells were developed and regenerated into whole plant so that these plants could stand against the herbicides against the toxins that are there in the fields then we see that the isolation method is uh, used to raise tobacco plants resistant to wild fire now what is wild fire children it is not the forest fire uh, which you might think but the isolation method is used to raise tobacco plant there is resistant to a bacterium which is known as pseudomonas tabaci and this uh, bacterium pseudomonas tabaci it is uh, able to burn uh, the tobacco plants and that is why uh, this is known as the wild fire but once uh, tobacco plants that are resistant to uh, the bacterium pseudo tobacci were developed so now these plants can be developed for medicinal value in big fields and which can be used uh, for the help of medicine etc then we see herbicide resistant areas identified important uh, to future crop productivity plants developed which are triazole carbon uh, carbamate resistant triazoles and carbamate are different kind of herbicides so uh, we could develop through tissue culture plants that were resistant to these herbicides this is possible by addition of foreign genes so what we had to do was like you had studied in the previous chapter that a foreign gene had to be added onto the genome of uh, a certain uh, bacteria likewise uh, these foreign genes were added to the genome and these are obtained in several varieties of plants which are resistant to herbicides uh, like corn we have rape seed which is reared for oil etc in tomatoes also uh, we could develop uh, herbicide resistance uh, through foreign genes then in potatoes in tobacco and in soya bean then we see that cloning a resistant gene and inserting in a crop species by transformation we had studied this technique of transformation how uh, a clone resistant gene could be inserted in the crop species so that we could transform these crop species into uh, resistant uh, plant species then we see salt tolerant plants were developed through tissue culture through isolation of desirable mutants or isolation of desirable uh, traits characteristics and salt tolerant plants were developed this has has been established in capsicum in datura plant and in rice etc so uh, children we have studied uh, up till now about the three uh, techniques in tissue culture and we would go forward from here to study about uh, somatic hybrids in the next video so wish you all the best have a good day thank you